Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Donna Mitzos, and I am the moderator of this webinar featuring Ira Ozer. Before we begin, a few housekeeping tips. During the presentation, feel free to enter the questions in the question box. We'll gather them together and hold a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. And don't worry, if you miss something, this webinar is being recorded and you will receive it a link via email to access the recording at your leisure and a link to the white paper. You can also download the white paper accessible on the handout section on your screen. We encourage you to stay on for the entire webinar and a lucky winner will be selected in a drawing for a $100 gift card. I'll announce the winner at the end. And finally, as an attendee today, you're eligible for one credit hour toward your CMP from the Events Industry Council. We also want to thank our sponsors, Magnolia and Airly. So sit back and get comfortable. The webinar begins now. I'm honored to introduce our speaker, Ira Ozer, founder of Innovation Meetings, who just presented this session at our Senior Meeting Planning Summit in March. Ira, take it away. Thanks, Donna. I really appreciate your intro. Everybody, thanks for participating. This is Ira Ozer. As Anna said, president of Innovation Meetings, and this subject is very close to my heart. I'm very passionate about the field of innovation, and this uh, subject is innovation meetings, which we believe are a new category of meetings that have a strategic imperative. Now, I've been in the meetings incentive industry for more than 20 years now, and have designed all kinds of various meetings, and we know what they are. They're board meetings sales meetings, training meetings, new product launches, strategy meetings, and group incentive travel programs. These are the kinds of meetings that every travel supplier has in their websites and in their brochures. And we believe that innovation meetings could and should become a new category of meetings that allow all meeting planners to become more strategic uh, with their companies. So what is an innovation meeting and how is it different from any other meeting? At an innovation meeting, the objective of the meeting is innovation. It's not an innovative meeting. All meetings these days are innovative. Every supplier wants to become more green, more creative, more innovative. This is where the actual objective of a meeting is innovation. We curate an innovation meeting in a bit different process than a typical meeting that focuses on the budget, the number of participants, where they're coming from, and so on. Our focus is what has been invented or what historical event has happened or what unbelievable inspirational thing is at the venue where we want to hold this meeting because we want to be able to have a number of dramatic stories and aha moments that we can create through a unique venue. We uh, at this meeting we start with innovation assessments and then provide creativity and design thinking training we'll get into in a little la later because most companies don't have a culture of innovation and it's important for people to understand how to get back to that. We talk about innovation process, and we use specialized innovation technology platforms to allow people to participate and collaborate. We have a good deal of our event is off-site, not just in the meeting room, but we want to get into design thinking out in the field from the customer perspective. We want to then collaborate and take all ideas back and work on them together, uh, and then judge ideas is, is part of the broader group. And we want to provide rewards and recognition for the ideas and the collaboration and make it a lot of fun. Uh, and in the same way, we'd make an incentive travel program fun as an evening event. And then we want to make sure we can project and measure ROI of the innovations that have been developed at the meeting. We want to take a couple of polls to get a sense of you and most people on the webinar are meeting planners and some for it, whether in uh, some form, whether in-house or third party. So the first poll is, have you designed an innovation meeting which includes these integrated components that I just mentioned? Please take a moment to answer that poll, yes or no. So it's not a meeting about innov uh, just an innovative meeting, but one that has those various components. Assessment, training, technology collaboration, reward and recognition about innovation and ROI planning. Just waiting for the poll results to, to appear. 
it's important for us to, uh, as we develop and work with preview uh, media about whether most meeting planners have been working in this field of innovation to some extent, to a great extent, and in some cases there are companies with meeting planners that have a lot of experience, or really to no extent and meeting planners are not given the opportunity in advance to participate in this from a strategic point of view. So we're trying to get us assess a sense of that. The results are in, any... Ira. Do you see them? Oh, great. Oh, I, I don't see the survey results. Um, so we have 19% yes and 81% no. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for participating, everybody. So there's a lot of opportunity for us to, to move this thing along. The format of an innovation meeting to start off with is, is similar to other meetings. We start in, in generally a conference room. We need to have an agenda that explains the objective and the components of the meeting so people know what's going on. We want to talk a bit about that innovation and, and or historical background of the venue, but, but not just lay it out. We're going to give that to them in stories and in experiences. We're going to go through those personality and innovation assessments I'll talk about in a few minutes. We're going to talk about creativity and design thinking and take them through exercises. An innovation meeting ideally should be about two days, but it can be as uh, it could be one day. It could be as short as half a day. It really shouldn't be a quick seminar format, though. It should be about a half a day minimum. Uh, we're going to use innovation technology platforms, as I mentioned and practice that so people can use it. Uh, this, these are different than typical event apps. I'll cover that. And then we're going to form teams based on these strengths, and we're going to be able to get collaboration going. And then we're getting out in the field where we can have group experiences, team challenges, as well as individual observations from the customer point of view. And we're, when we're then done with those exercises, and we'll have several times out in the field for discovery, we're going to have uh, breakouts back in individual rooms where we can share problems, the impacts, and the potential solutions among the team members determine the financial quantification of the innovative ideas, and then present the findings to the broader group. If ideally, if time and budget permits, and this gets into a multi-day meeting, we'll create innovation centers for each of the areas necessary to properly research the ideas, to develop communications, uh, to uh, use technology in a more advanced way, to move ideas from just the, the ideation stage into a funnel that scores them, for example, uh, where we can use have a financial center where, where the teams can go to really get into ROI elements of the meetings, uh, of the ideas for the meetings. And then um, we want to be basically be able to allow people through these innovation centers to create much more uh, fleshed out ideas that can be presented to the broader group and at the rewards and recognition, ideally dinner, evening event, make it a lot of fun where we can have pitch competitions and or innovation game shows if time permits. Make it a lot of fun to take those ideas that have solved customer uh, problems or challenges and then have a great time with it. But back up for a second, so it's just to define innovation. So when I'm talking about innovation from the business perspective, it's ideas that when implemented provide an economic benefit, generally more sales and profits and also reduced costs. So there are four basic types of innovation. One, and the one we, we can benefit, everyone can participate in on an ongoing daily basis, incremental innovation. It's improving processes and products. Expansion is new product introductions. Transformational innovation is where we create new inventions and whole new businesses. And the one we're familiar with these days is disruptive innovation, where new industries are created and the old companies, which could be leaders, must transform or die. And very importantly, a secondary benefit of having a culture of innovation is that more people feel recognized, appreciated, and engaged. And that is a massive benefit that goes way beyond even the value of any of the ideas if they're implemented. So if you took that if you create an engagement hierarchy based on Maslow's hierarchy of, of, of human emotions, human needs it you know if you have a company that starts with a, a base of psychological and physical wellness and there's actually an awards program the american psychological association has the psychologically healthy workplace awards program very important so people feel that there's not a toxic environment when they go to work and they can actually feel good about working with others 
Um, also, one of the primary human drivers, one of the primary human mo motivators, according to self-determination theory, is that sense of relatedness. So people need to feel they can work together. If you layer on that recognition, having a, a real culture of recognition where recognition is frequent, it's authentic, it's given by everyone, it's meaningful, then you have um, the ability to have a culture of intrapreneurship where everybody thinks like an owner and everybody's focused on the customer and not the business process of their department. Once you have those elements, at the very top of that pyramid is innovation. So to have a culture of innovation, it's a very engaged culture of people that really care about the business and its growth. And examples of innovative companies that we're all familiar with, Barnes & Noble, which was a, an incrementally uh, innovative company. It created the concept of the book superstore where you could have vast choices, where you could sit, you could relax, you could read a book. Whoever thought you could read a book at a bookstore without buying it, you could have coffee. But those businesses have been transformed by Amazon. You have America Online, which was the leading big elephant company of the internet for many, many years. They were really the first social media company until Facebook took over. And AOL is a shadow of what it once was. It, it almost doesn't exist. Uh, Starwood, and I'm not picking on Starwood. Star is a fantastic hotel, great incremental transformation and expansion by opening up many, many different brands under the Starwood umbrella. And like all hotel and resort brands, now Airbnb came along and transformed a disrupted part of the industry, even where not just consumer travel is affected, but we're looking at Airbnb for groups and how that can work. Uh, and companies like Foot Locker that were the leaders in creating the, the superstore kind of concept with all the, all the athletic shoes you could do. And who would think that a company like Zappos could get people to buy shoes without ever trying them on? I never would have believed that. Uh, so why is innovation a strategic imperative? Because it's relevant to all businesses as the pace of change has become faster. There's more competition in every industry, much lower barriers to entry. When I, worked, when I was in, I started in the incentive industry years ago at Sony, Sony was the apple of its day. And we created uh, from the factory innovations which were phenomenal. Uh, the Walkman, for example. And in those days, a company like Sony in the consumer electronics industry had one to two years of lead time before a competitor could catch up with a knockoff or a similar product. Today in the consumer electronics business, it's down to three months or less. Uh, and it's a, a huge change in the, in the speed where companies have to go to market and become more innovative. All, innovative. Also the use of data, big data as it's known, artificial intelligence and machine learning is digitizing the customer experience, uh, which reduces the labor costs in many cases, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. When I call American Airlines and I'm just checking on a flight, I don't mind. In fact, I actually enjoy that it's an artificial uh, voice response system. I don't mind at all. But when I want to speak to a person to resolve an issue, that's when I need to be able to get through and, cut, and companies need to understand the difference. And social media obviously powers information these days. So companies can be significantly affected through social media, both positively and negatively. So quick poll, do you believe that innovation meetings are strategic initiatives? And Donna, let me know when the results are in. So again, if we understand that innovation itself is strategic, every company needs to do it, do we similarly believe that innovation meetings are strategic and beneficial to meeting planners to become more strategic with C-suite leaders, or is it just another type of meeting? Well, the results are in, Ira, and it's 100% yes. Okay, so I think that's good news for the industry. So suggestion systems have been around for years. Innovation isn't new. In the 1970s and 80s, many companies had suggestion systems. Uh, American Airlines, for example, had a very well-known system where one, just as one example, a flight attendant realized that people were throwing away an extra olive that they served in the martini, so they cut back one olive. They saved about $3 million a year on that one idea. Sounds stupid, but it's very simple. It's observable by someone on the front line. Similarly, the Dallas Morning News, a guy who worked on the press, literally noticed that they were losing a gallon or so of ink when, they, when he changed bottles in the ink press, printing press, and that one idea also saved millions of dollars. 
But suggestion systems were focused on savings in those days because companies were fat and happy. Retail pricing was MSRP and so on. And those suggestion systems tended to be bottom-up ideas where people suggested ideas based on, the, based on uh, ways they could improve their jobs and their short term. Innovation systems today focus on growth, tend to be top-down, challenge-driven, and long-term. By challenge-driven, I mean the companies identify problems that they want to solve, and they ask for people to participate in ideas towards specific problems. They still want bottom-up ideas, but not the focus. Examples of very innovative companies, as we all know, Google gives engineers 20% of their time to spend on innovative projects of their own. And Cisco, John Chambers, the former CEO, had said that 70% of their products didn't exist five years ago. So it's, it's really amazing, especially in tech sector. So poll three, who are the best innovators? The executives and technical staff, sales reps and managers, customer service people, or customers themselves? What's your thought process on this? We have to be technical to come up with the best ideas. The sales reps and managers who speak with customers know the best ways to innovate. Is it the customer service people who are talking to customers, especially customers who have problems? And often those people are marginalized. They're not given any innovation training or opportunity to actually. The, the results are in, Ira. So we what have 2% say executives and technical staff, 13% say sales reps and managers, 28% at customer service people, and an overwhelming 57% suggest the customers are the best innovators. Yeah, and, and that's uh, that's great thinking. And, and it's so consistent with the fact that most companies really don't have good ways for frontline people and customers to, to suggest ideas for improvements. It's more companies that are out there, it's, uh, at least in my experience, it's lip service. It's, it's we can listen to a customer, we can acknowledge their idea, but they're not capturing those ideas and actually creating innovations from them in too many cases. So in, the, in a recent LinkedIn search we did, there are 587,000 people with the title of Chief Executive Officer. There are 254,000 with the title of Chief Marketing Officer, and there are only 27,466 with the title of Chief Innovation Officer. This is an emerging title. It's, it's been used at big companies for about a decade, but it's starting to grow more and more with medium size and even smaller companies. Uh, and these are the people that orchestrate innovation across the enterprise. It's a challenging job. Uh, and it's something that I believe as strategic meeting planners, we can um, support that role very well with these, with these meetings. So quick polls four and five. Does your company have a chief innovation officer? We'll start with that. It's a yes or no question on this one. And I know we have people from the business world, the academic world, and a number of different industries, so it will be interesting to see what the answer is. The results are in, and 14% say yes, 86% no. Yeah, so 14% um, are probably the bigger companies. So we have a lot of, of work to do in corporate America. And another quick question. if if you have a chief innovation officer, if you're one of those uh, minority, do you plan and administer meetings for this CNO? That'll be interesting. And then in follow-ups, we can then assess whether those meetings are planned differently than uh, any typical meeting, the process of it as we're talking about here, or are they still sort of the, the old method? 2% yes, 98% no. Okay, wow. So this is a big opportunity. When, and we talk about a culture of innovation, which every company really needs to have this. It's focused on the customer experience, not immediate profits. If you look at a, comp a, co a company like Amazon, which people would say is the most innovative company that exists today and possibly ever, um, they spent years, Jeff Bezos spent 
dec- more than a decade of losing money and just not caring that they weren't making a profit. I mean, the only way he pulled it off is because he got a lot of VC money uh, before the market crashed uh, in the dot-com boom. And now it's paid off, but it was a very long-term view, focused on customer experience. Innovation has to be open to everyone, as we talked about, employees, customers, vendors, channel partners, even the community. We want to train people about creativity, collaboration, and innovation, and most companies don't do that. People have to be empathetic. They have to be observant. They have to be team-oriented. They can't have a selfish culture to have a culture of innovation. And they need a systematized approach and a technology platform to track ideas, collaborate on challenges, provide feedback, develop solutions, rank action, and many other things that these systems can do. Quick poll, and there's only a few more. Does your company have a culture of innovation? Would you say your company does all of those things and has a culture of innovation and an organized, suggest, uh, not suggestion system, but an organized innovation system which you and everyone else can participate in? The results are in. Yes, 58%. No, 42%. Hmm, okay. So a lot of companies do, and that's a good thing. There are companies like IKEA that have a boot camp with startups that can actually work hand in hand with IKEA product development people and take customer feedback and, and research and then develop innovative solutions, such as this cart that's developed for urban customers so they have a way of getting product purchases home. Uh, it there was a huge lift in purchases because people would normally go to an Ikea in a city and buy two items, maybe three. Now they could buy a whole bunch and bike at home. And if you don't have a culture of recognition of innovation, we know what happens. Companies like Kodak, there were leaders for many, many, many decades. And the film business just kept their legacy business, didn't focus on digitizing, and literally are gone. And that's that's a shame, and that's what will happen. So the components of an innovation meeting are we start with assessments, we do training, we use technology that's specialized, we go into the field for discovery of observations and problems, we collaborate with the team members, and then we reward and recognize the participation, the process, and the results. So in innovation, personality, and motivation style assessments, there are a number of tools out there. Um, we use our own methods, and we also partner with many companies at innovation meetings, and these companies are available for everybody. We'd be happy to share all kinds of resources about this. So starting with innovation styles and strengths, there's a, a, a good one called Personality Poker. Stephen Shapiro is a keynote speaker about innovation, um, one of the thought leaders in the business, and there are hundreds of, of great speakers and thought leaders. But it, 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 we won't go into it, but it talks to the point of some people are very, very innovative and creative and constantly have ideas. Some people have no ideas but are fantastic at execution, and there are blends of people who are better evaluators and so on. This kind of exercise is really something that brings attention to people to understand their personal innovation style and how they can work well with others. But that's only part of it. You need to understand personality styles to improve communications. Dr. Tony Alessandra developed the Platinum Rule, and it's a great program that allows people to, basically his Platinum Rule says, don't do the Golden Rule, which says do unto others as you, as they would have done, as you would have done unto you, because what you should do as a Platinum Rule is do unto others as they would have done unto them. So if you understand what people want and how to work better with them, that's also important. And lastly, the motivation style is very important because that really understands how to collaborate. I'll talk about that one in a, uh, in, a, in a minute in more detail. Let's take a quick poll. Have you taken an innovation assessment, such as personality poker, where you've been assessed for your innovation ability or innovation style? And there's not a, a good style or a bad style. There are people like me who are very uh, innovative in terms of production of ideas but not necessarily the best executional people. And there are people that are fantastic about executing, but really don't come up with new ideas. And they they don't care, they don't want to. It's not one's good or bad, but you need a blend of people on an innovation team. Any results? The results are in. 11% yes, and 89% have not. 
Okay, it's a great experience. Love everyone to do it, and we can we can talk about that at future events. So the Culture Works is a company started by uh, Chester Elton and Adrian Gostick, who are experts and New York Times bestsellers in motivation. And this was um, a um, they created something called the Motivators Assessment, based on research in conjunction with Watson and Wyatt of 150,000 people. They identified 23 separate motivators that in blends, they, in, in like groups, they call them identities, these, they lay out as these. And these are the primary motivators for, for this group of people. And when we understand our own identities and we understand then other people's identities in our work group, we understand how to work more effectively together. So and we won't get into detail, but there are achievers who people wanna just accomplish a project, builders who are focused mostly on working together and being part of a team, caregivers who are really fun, empathetic people, family-oriented people, reward-driven people who really want the prestige of accomplishing something, the recognition, sometimes the money, thinkers who are people that really want to do a better job of improving things, they, they really uh, thrive on that autonomy drive, uh, and, and they want to create impact. So those are important to understand to work together more effectively. There are a variety of collaboration and innovation technologies available. So for an innovation meeting, the, the deeper innovation platforms are just too much. They're enterprise scale, they're expensive, they take a lot of time to train, and so on. There's a company, there are a number of them, but a company called Zinda, which created a product called Journeys, is an excellent app for taking teams through innovation, gathering ideas, sharing them, collaborating, working together, it's gamified, people can earn points, we can have leaderboards, and a lot of other tools in a very simple to use mobile app. Very good for innovation meetings. Um, and other companies like Imaginatic, Spigot, and Bright Idea are these larger scalable platforms where if innovation is gonna be done, not just at the meeting, but as part of the enterprise culture, those would be very appropriate platforms to, to, to get involved in. One of our last polls is, have you used an innovation technology platform such as Spigot or Imaginatic or Mind Matters or any of those? And there are, there are dozens of them. Do you have at your company an innovation technology platform that you can go to post ideas, collaborate on ideas, and, and work with others? The results are in, Ira. 4% say yes, 96 no. Yeah, big opportunity in companies to have uh, innovation and part of their culture. And in creativity and innovation training, the idea is most people, even creative people, when they get involved in organizations that tend to be bureaucratic, they, uh, they lose it. They, they might submit an idea over the years. The idea is shot down. They never get, no one ever replied back to them about the idea. They feel, you know what, if you don't want my ideas, forget it, and they shut down. So we need to train people at innovation meetings about that cre creativity process uh, and the innovation process. There are many training companies and methods we won't go into now. Juice is one. Steve Shapiro has a method. Solution People in Chicago has a method. And there are many, many of these we can bring into bear, depending on the nature of the innovation meeting, the industry, the types of problems we want to solve, the budget, and many other factors. Last poll. Have you hired an innovation training company, such as Juice or one of these others, to work on one of your meetings or events? And that's our last poll. And we won't ask, but the follow up, and if you feel like emailing me, is if you've hired an innovation training company, um, did that come through the meetings department or was that from? innovation or training or somewhere else? So 6% say yes, 94% no. Okay, okay, great. Another opportunity for us to be more strategic. We also wanna teach design thinking as part of these, and I use this slide, there are many slides on design thinking, because it's to mention that this doesn't live in just one consulting company. I think a lot of people think that. Design thinking has been around for years, it's taught in the educational environment. In this case, the Calgary Board of Education created this slide. And it's a process to go from discovering ideas, defining them, ideating, 
prototyping, and then testing them in the real market. So it's going from problem finding, problem solving, and then testing solutions. And it's a great process. We take them through that at innovation meetings, and we can follow up with more information about it, uh, you know, if someone's interested. Uh, there's a bit more about this Journeys app for, for problems. So we can capture problems, take notes. It can take photographs. So if people notice problems or opportunities for improvements, they take photos of it and notes. We can do all kinds of contest games, ratings, and gamification, which just makes the process a lot more fun with points, badges, and leaderboards. And ROI is critical, right? If we're going to have innovation and innovative ideas, we need to be able to measure them. We need to be able to forecast uh, how are they going to pay off because no company is going to invest in innovation unless they can understand the payoff. There are many ways to measure innovation. Methods by Jack, Jack and Patty Phillips at the ROI Institute uh, have a very formal method, a certification program about ROI. Uh, we won't go into that now. And the ROI Pro System by Travers has been developed and it's a technology platform that sort, supports a methodology. Once you determine the key performance indicators for innovation, the cost, you can model and project the ROI. And they consider all impacts that the innovative ideas have on the company, not just the area where the idea might benefit or reduce costs, but the entire company, product development, marketing, sales, human resources, finance, and operations. And it can track all of that in a quantified way. So we're, we have a way of measuring ROI for our innovation meetings that can prove the worth to the C-suite. And why take innovation meetings off-site? The reality is many innovation meetings can be done on-site at the company headquarters. And many companies develop innovation labs and skunk works and studios and other names. But the, but the great benefit of taking them off-site, which is consistent with what Stephen Rogelberg He's a PhD who recently wrote this book called The Surprising Science of Meetings. And it's, it's talking about ways meetings should be best operated. That taking people out of the office is less distracting for their day-to-day -day job. People are in more innovative and inspirational destinations and venues. So it gives them an opportunity to have a fresh perspective and a change of pace. In these new places with different customer experiences, they see things in other industries and other places that they might not have thought of back in their own office and their own state, and various cultural and business perspectives are taken into account as well. And it allows them to co collaborate with people from other places and other roles within their company or as part of their broader corporate community. This is consistent also with the Marriott Convention and Resort Network Mastermind Platform, a very innovative thing initiative that Marriott has done recently. And it's, it's focusing on these five areas in their curriculum that they're developing. Emotional intelligence. So we need to develop meetings with a proactive approach to personalized experiences. Orchestrated serendipity. That they should, meetings shouldn't just be rigid, but have freedom and surprise in elements that are not constrained by agendas. These are all done at innovation meetings. Multimodal design. So we, we take the unique objective and audience and every event space has a different personality for those needs. Absolutely, we want to get out of the cookie cutter meeting room with innovation meetings. And it's bigger than oneself, that every event has a message that people can understand before and to take back. In our case, this is creating a meeting focused on innovation and a sense of place so that we're out there in the local surroundings. We're not just going from the airport to the venue, we're really going to get out in the field and understand and, and um, experience that culture. So from a travel and meetings perspective, there are many examples of innovations. I'll give you one. But if you think about it from your personal observations, um, have you seen innovative ideas needed for airports, taxi lines, transfers, hotels, and events, things that we could all do to improve events? I think we could discuss this topic for hours. And if you have an observation or a problem or solution, and you feel like emailing it to me, there's my email address. I'll give it to you later as well. We want to gather thoughts about this from the meeting planning community and then develop more and more research about this topic. So here's one example that I experienced on a, on a client visit down to Cancun. Great program, but this is what you get. You had just had a four hour airplane trip and now you're in this massive line to get through immigration on the other side. So what's the problem and outcomes? You know, aside from griping about it, the problem is there's a long wait time. The outcomes, people have a poor first impression, 
It delays your trip after a long flight. It discourages visitors, especially short weekend hops or three-day incentive trips. It's uncomfortable. It's annoying. You're snaking through a line while carrying bags, which makes it even more difficult. And it creates negative attitudes. And this, I noticed in that day, in the newspaper, so I took a photo of it. So the answer is the Cancun airport is going to add more staff to shorten the immigration wait times. Now, is that really the, the answer? Is that the only answer that would make sense? There's a huge cost to this. There's visitor's time. There's lost revenues at merchants where people were going to go through duty-free or, or other merchants and then say, now nah, let's just leave the airport. Delays in ground transfers and all the people that have to pile up in traffic when people finally get through. All those new immigration and airport personnel that Cancun has to hire to solve that line problem. And then after the four planes have come in, they still have a problem because they have too many people standing around. The loss, what's the cost of the loss of future air and hotel bookings by people and companies saying, yeah, we'll go there for a week or more, but we're not going to go for three or four days. And what's the loss of advocacy and referrals, people like me explaining that story and other to, to others. So what more innovative solutions can we develop when we find any of us meeting planners or participants to these problems? Now, Cancun already has or could have visitor data from USTSA and or the airlines. Right. And I'm not just picking on Cancun. I think Cancun's terrific in, in, in many, many ways. U.S. airports are just as bad. When you think about it, passengers are already vetted for security purposes. They just got off a four hour flight, which gives all kinds of time to cross check the data. The airports could put in biometric devices in the corridors or kiosks and use more tools like global entry. And the idea of any airport having or paper forms where people have to fill out paper these days is crazy. It should be digitized. One, we, we presented, as Don had mentioned, we presented this at the Preview Senior Planner Summit, which was down at Atlantic City in March. And to give you a very quick sense of this, now this was a, a seminar format, not a full innovation meeting, but we wanted the participants who were all senior meeting planners, about 30 of them, to consider for Atlantic City and Harris, the, the sponsor hotel, how could we give them advice on increasing their meetings business? For preview, how can we enhance their planner events? And for our own companies, how can we design and administer innovation meetings that are strategic, strategic and enhance the value for all of our businesses? So the agenda was to give an overview of Atlantic City and the history, to talk about idea poker and innovation games and innovation training. We didn't have time to do it, unfortunately, to discuss the meeting, the technology apps for innovation, and then to talk about recognizing and rewarding people. Atlantic City has an incredible history, and most places we would go to for an innovation do, and we want to curate at places that have incredible histories that create a story of innovation that we can bring into our meeting. You know, so the railroad was created in 1854. Before that, Atlantic City was nothing. And then in, the, in 1870, roads came in, and tourists became, and then they created this boardwalk. Uh, and uh, the, I'll, I'll give you a clue. The boardwalk was created. None of us knew it. Not as a kind of a cool way to walk down the beach without getting sand on your shoes. It was just to keep sand out of the hotels. Atlantic City prospered as a resort, resort town, including through prohibition, because of the mob, as we saw in Boardwalk Empire. And that's an interesting story. But it started having a downturn after World War II because of air conditioning, people getting home pools, and air travel. So what was the aha moment for the city? Gambling. They legalized it in the 1970s with a master plan of 15 major casinos. They wanted to compete with Las Vegas and rebuild the city, and they did. For, for It went from a billion dollars in, in revenues in 1981 to five billion in 2003. They had 26 years of record profits in Atlantic City. But the disruption happened a second time. In the 80s, it declined due to Las Vegas innovations, Indian casinos, and online gaming, and financial bear markets tore apart the, the business fundamentals of these over-leveraged casinos, multiple bankruptcies, basically poor execution of the integrated whole. So what could we as meeting planners do? How could we suggest ideas for innovations? So in the planning stage of this, we created, although we only had an hour to do a seminar, we, cre we worked with the Destination Management Organization Atlantic City to plan elements of the meeting that were not our seminar, but that we could bring innovation to. So for example, we went to Stockton University, which had been, which is a New Jersey State School in the Pineland, in the Pine Barrens, 
They created a new campus right on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, just down from the casinos. And they created a new hospitality school, which we were able to talk to the dean about. Very interesting conversation. Um, the Monopoly City Tour and every meeting planner can use this uh, idea. When we were transporting the meeting planners from the, the Harris, the sponsor hotel, to Stockton University, we made sure that we took these cool trolleys and the tour operator on the trolley gave us a tour of all of those monopoly stops, if you will, of why that game was created and all those streets and the innovative places in Atlantic City. Told stories about Soul War Taffy, for example, which started because it was a flood and it was an innovative idea, much like 3M's post-it note. It started as an accident. Uh, and then we ended our evening at the Knife and Fork, which is a historic restaurant where we continued the innovation conversation as well as the historic elements of Atlantic City and how we could bring it. Just a few minutes more and I'll close for questions. There were many innovative solutions or ideas that planners had. Here are just two. The first one relates really to us when we were thinking of designing this. So how could we create an innovation meeting concept really when we just had an hour seminar time? So, uh, so since our time was limited, the problem was we wouldn't have time for the innovation assessments or training. And the impacts of that, we, we knew we'd get fewer observations and have fewer problems to solve. So we, in advance, consulted with the DMO, which meeting planners can do in every market, and many do, to brainstorm ideas for that efficient innovation. And we, we used that tour to really add hours of um, extra time focusing on innovation, which would have just been other activities. At the meeting itself, an observation was that there was a wonderful breakfast bacon bar presentation that Harris had, had put on for the planner. So it was really marvelous. I, I noticed it in, as well. It was uh, five bacon stations, all kinds of creative preparations. And yet many of the meeting planners missed it or if they were there for breakfast at all, they rushed because they got there last minute. That's very common in meetings. Problems are food waste and huge costs. And we all experience in many types of meetings where people just don't want to get there early enough. Uh, and the lack of participants enjoying that unique experience was a problem. So what's the impact in the financial quantification? The food costs were significant for the planner and the host hotel in this case to put, that, to put out that station and the chef and all the preparations with much of it going to waste. And they would have lack of future sales for the hotel banquet department if planners who were supposed to be there to enjoy it didn't even have that opportunity. So the solution that was developed was to announce the experience to participants in advance so that they knew that there'd be this fantastic breakfast presentation of this unique culinary experience. I know bacon's popular, but this was particularly over the top. Harris did a great job. And by getting people there early, it also encourages more networking time. And if you think about quantifying networking time, that can have a huge benefit for planners as well as the, the host hotel and the conference sponsors. So uh, let me stop now. Thank you for your time and attention. Are there any questions that people might have? And please put them into the Q&A box and Donna will read them. And also, you'll have my email address again in a minute. If you're interested in receiving uh, a complimentary motivators assessment, I'd be delighted to send it to you. It's a $40 value. It, it, and it's worth far more than that. It just costs $40. It will literally take about 10 to 15 minutes. You'll get an email. You'll have a unique code. It literally takes 10 to 15 minutes for you to take this assessment, and you'll immediately be emailed a report on your personal motivators, 23 motivators in rank order, and where your primary motivation identities are. And it'll give you very good insight to your personal motivators. Donna, do we have any questions? Thank you, Ira. Yes, we do have some questions coming in, and, and please keep those questions coming in. Uh, one question is, what is an innovation game show? Ah, okay. So an innovation game show is a fun concept, like any TV game show. But we're going to pull up individuals and people from different groups to take all kinds of, um, to answer all kinds of questions in a fun way. So instead of a serious presentation about the innovative ideas, it's going to be in a game show format where they can win prizes and they can compete teams against teams. And it's just a lot of fun. Okay. Thank you. 
uh, another one is uh, there's a lot of I noticed a lot of different innovation technology apps. They said, how do I learn more about which one is best for my company? Yeah, there are a lot of differences like in every technology, whether CRM or, or meeting apps. There are many innovation technology apps. I mentioned Journeys is a is a great one, and it's a very it's a low cost and it's a very entrepreneurially owned company. So they want to make a name, you know, make a name for themselves, and they like the the meetings uh, innovation market. But there are so many good platforms. So uh, if you want to email me, you, I'll be happy to give advice on any program that you're working on or thinking about working on. Uh, all kinds of all kinds of innovation technologies are out there. Thank you, Ira. Uh, another question is, how would I, as a planner, go about getting my organization's management to think more about innovation? Yeah, I mean, innovation, as most people agreed, is a strategic initiative. Every company needs a culture of innovation. Most companies don't have it. And by getting people off-site in innovation meetings, we can really prime the pump and get it going. It doesn't have to be starting with an enterprise innovation system, which is massively complex, uh, expensive, time-consuming, has all kinds of bureaucratic uh, areas to overcome, and so on and so forth. We can start with smaller departments. We can start with, uh, you know, developing meetings that are focused on innovation and taking it from there, building it. It's a real opportunity for meeting planners to become more strategic with the C-suite. Thank you. Another question from Jennifer, I work for an association with a very limited budget. Any suggestions as to how to include something budget friendly within my educational meetings, similar to what you said? Yeah, uh, it, an innovation meeting does not have to be expensive. Um, the the tools like so to design an innovation meeting, whether it's something we do at innovation meetings. It's not a, this isn't intended to be a sales pitch, but. It's des the design of the meeting needs to be done properly. It's, it's very inexpensive to use us or others to design the elements with you. And then the tools themselves are not necessarily expensive depending on your group, how big it is and so on. So for example, personality poker, which is a fun uh, tool that I, I talked about that talks about the innovation styles. And it's, it's, it plays like a game. It only costs um, about $200 for a whole small meeting. Um, the Journeys app is she's still pricing it probably five to ten dollars per participant for a very robust uh, app. Uh, and then rewards and recognition are pretty inexpensive because you're just really rewarding as more contest format for fun. But the impact of the ideas that come out of that meeting can be extremely valuable for for the company. Okay, doesn't Thank have to you, be expensive. Ira. There's another sure. question. From Trey, if you're a small company, less than 10 people, uh, and you meet daily, would you recommend an outside company to add a new fresh voice? I think it's always good to add a fresh perspective that's uh, outside, that especially innovation consultant who ha experiences multiple industries, because no matter how great one industry is, you could be the best. There could be things that are going on in another industry, it would be just phenomenal uh, for new, new product or new ways of serving customers or so on. So yeah, I would say so, sure. Sure, but it's easier to have a culture of innovation with a small company as long as you have all those other things, you know, supportive culture, recognition culture, nice and, you know, if people feel like they're really part of a team, they have camaraderie and so on, it'd be great, yeah. Okay, Ira, well, we, that looks we're good. like all of the questions that we have right now. Okay, so, perfect. So I just wanted to give you my contact information. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, we'll break 10 minutes early. Uh, if you'd like us to talk about innovation meeting design, consulting, or facilitation, please feel free to email me or call. Uh, and if you want, again, a motivator's assessment for yourself, just send me an email. I'd be happy to shoot that to you. Uh, and thank you very much. We'll see you okay. at another preview webinar or Visionary Summit soon. Thanks at for your participation. Point, thank you for um, participating. Great. We don't want to forget to announce the winner. So at this point, the winner of the oh, gift great. card is Deborah Perlini. Deborah Perlini. Right. I want to thank everyone for participating and for uh, thank you all for attending. Have a wonderful day.
Thanks, Donna.